Today we're going to do some electrolysis. So first of all I'm going to clean up an area, make it level, and then we'll go from there.
you can see the bubbling around the gear edges, especially where it's closest to the anodes. You can see the circular ring of bubbles. It makes a pretty big difference the uh, how much water there is, so that the current can basically move around. And you'll you don't see in the front the spokes of the gear getting any action. But now if we zoom up in the top left in the corner, you can see the bubble outline of the spoke. And it's happening on that side and not this side, just because the water's deeper over there by the lay of the land. And so the anode's a little deeper and it can reach inside. So you really got to move your anodes around so that they have a kind of a frontal plain view of the part you're cleaning. I mean, they'll get around a little bit, but like in the bore of the gear, I'll have to put a pipe or something in there and run that as a separate little thing to get all the little bits in there and clean that out. So when you put nanodes on your boat, it's kind of the same deal, right? You need coverage. All right, it's getting towards 10 a.m. You can see that uh, it's plenty active. So you can get by, I mean, here we're running at 15 volts AC. It's down to 13.6 DC. So, I mean, as long as you got a battery charger that can put out the amperage, you know, if you're doing bigger pieces, battery charger would be fine. I mean, the adjustable, yeah, it's, it's great. And having a readout and knowing what's going on, that's nice too. But at the end of the day, a big dumb old battery charger will uh, give you the same result. So you can see the wind hasn't been too great and she's uh, foamed up pretty good. You can definitely see where the anodes are affecting the gear face by the wonderful foamy texturing. And uh, I'm just going to put some cross pieces in so I can get the inside of the spokes some electrolytic action. So. Thoughts on anodes? Surface area is good. It'll be tempting to use sheet metal because it's you know light and thin and easy to cut and whatever. But I mean, you are really trying to move this onto that, basically. And so you should kind of look at anodes in this respect as something you want to lose the material. And so you need material to lose. So putting thin, thin, thin stuff on, you know, this is. 1 16th and it, well, it lasted one go. Um, it's kind of like sending a skinny girl to a fat losing seminar, right? I mean, it'll work for a while and she'll lose some weight, but uh, you, you need a, a big fat girl to go to the weight loss program. And you'll, you know, it'll take longer and you'll get better results. So here's the skinny girl you uh, sent to the weight loss program. It's kind of cool. Doesn't really look like it goes all the way through until you realize, man, there's not much left to that. working where the spokes are sort of foaming a little bit to figure out where to drop the extra anodes.
If the anodes flip, looks like the electrolysis is doing well. So you can see a decade of rust is gone. Does it take a little bit of wire brushing to get the black rust oxide off after the bath? Yeah, it does. But as far as cleaning machine surfaces, I really don't know if there's a better system for doing it. I can't really think of a cheaper system for doing it. And even when we're pulling 35 amps DC, you know, at 10 volts or whatever it's working at, when you think of what's coming out of the actual outlet, you know, it's in the hundreds of watts. It's not a, a great power consumer. All right, let's talk about alligator clips. So you'll probably notice I managed to keep all the alligator clips out of the solution, which is uh, important on the anode side for sure. And this one, which was clamped onto the gear on the cathode side, you can see that it's, well, there's some discoloration, but there's, there's no erosion, there's no eating away of it, there's no, it's all good. So for the most part, the cathode side, you don't have to worry about it. But on the anode side, keep your clips out of the solution. So you can see, it's going to take a little bit of wire brushing by hand to get it all off. But nothing compared to having to angle grind it and wire wheel it. And really I think the most important thing is, is the quality of job it does if you have machine components lathe bedways or anything machined you can see it brings it back perfectly because if you look closely you can actually see the milling machine marks in the face well you can't but I can and uh, and that's really great that it doesn't actually damage the component it costs almost nothing to do it's not a lot of work I mean you're not packing it up there's no real pollution doesn't give you the instant gratification sandblasting does and it probably doesn't give you as good a paint adhesion but for machinery components well it's the cat's meow and very easy for do-it-yourselfers with a battery charger these plastic clamps I bought them a while ago like over a decade ago. I, I thought I'd use them for clamping a tarp onto something that you're going to leave out in the rain for four months and that way they wouldn't turn into rusting messes. And they're light, right? So you're not going to be pulling on whatever it is you're clamping your tarp to. And you know what? They're good for that. I can't believe how cheesy they are. It must have been an impulse buy. But they've been perfect. And for this type of thing where you might want to clamp something inside the solution, awesome. And so here you can see the gear just sort of cleaned up a little bit, hanging on the logging arch with the boom. I'll do a video of that eventually, but it's sure handy for moving 2,000 pound objects around with your quad or minivan or truck or whatever. It seems to always work. And it's got a telescopic section that you can see hanging underneath the arch that goes into it. It gives you 16 feet of boom, although I wouldn't lift 2,000 pounds. Can't lead over with that much boom out, but you can see it makes a minivan pretty useful. So I uh, did hit it a bit with a angle grinder with a wire wheel on it just because I got tired of using the hand wire brush. You can see that it's pretty much perfect almost an original condition that it would have been cast in you know, except for gear wear but as ready for paint as it's going to be without sandblasting
Well, primer's going on nice. Two part epoxy. Keep her going. First coat of primer went on, and the second coat of primer went on, and it is looking good. Now, wait a few hours, on goes the top coat. The uh, first coat of paint is going on pretty good. Film it, but the camera would get sprayed, so there's uh, the paint going on. Well, there you have it. Here's two coats of prime, two and a half, maybe almost three coats of paint, and we are done. Well, you can see, the gear is hung now out of the way for the paint to do its final cure. Everything turned out pretty good. But, uh, probably a waste of my time, but you know what? I think it's going to be good when it's done. So right now my intentions are, this is going to be the slewing base for a guy wire derrick crane. This way it can be the base and the crane can run around on top of it using the gear teeth for the slew drive. We'll see. It might become something completely different. These things evolve. Anyhow, have a great day.